What's going on? My name is Psyche and welcome back to Dead Cells. So this is going to be the second part of my tier lists for version 2.1 of the game. This time around, I'm going to be talking about the ranged weapons. So with the new 2.1 update, with how backpacks work, there's actually a lot of more ways to utilize some of these ranged weapons with, with the new mutation Acrobata Pack. So I'm really excited as to see how this new utility function will affect the whole metagame. In addition, the devs also changed so that ranged weapons are more associated with tactics gameplay. So as a result, more items on this list will be on the S tier because, well, tactics just has a lot of good items. So with that being said, my criteria for rating these weapons will be a bit different from maybe some other YouTubers or streamers rate them. So in order for an item to reach high on this tier list, it will have to be useful. So how good is it at clearing biomes and bosses? How fun is it to use? As well as, does it have a learning curve? So can you win runs with this weapon just when you pick it up for the first time? Or do you need some practice or training to get it to its full potential? So only once an item has satisfied all of these three conditions, they will be moved to the S tier. And on top of that, I also have these borders around different weapons. Those are the green, orange, and blue borders. A green border means that the weapon can be used by itself. It doesn't need any help from other weapons, it can just do its thing on its own. So something like this will be the explosive crossbow where, you know, you can just pick it up. You don't really need any other synergies to go along with it and then it can just work on its own. An item with the orange border, so such as pyrotechnics, you really need oil synergy to make it really work. So an orange border means that the item needs a small amount of support. And lastly, a blue border means that the item needs a lot of support to make it work. Such as the Hokuto's bow. However, that does not mean that the item is not viable. The Hokuto's bow does nothing on its own, but if you pair it with any other dot synergy that's short for damage over time, you can really make a solid build out of that. So with that being said, let's get started with the tier list. So first up, we have the Multiple Nox Bow. So the Multiple Nox Bow is kind of an ordinary weapon. However, even though it seems like a weapon you can just pick up and then shoot with it until an enemy dies, there's actually some small nuances as to how well you can handle this weapon because when you shoot the Multiple Nox Bow, there's actually a small window where the player is vulnerable. So you actually have to find the correct timing to use this weapon. And honestly, I actually think the multiple Nox bow is one of the most easily synergized and the most recognized ways to build a tactics setup. So this may come as a surprise, but multiple Nox bow, I'm actually gonna say it's an S tier item. Next up, the bow and endless quiver. So this is an item that I don't see very often, and that's probably a good sign because this item sucks. Yes, it has infinite ammo, but I can't see a scenario how that can be helpful. I've tried builds where I pair this with the quick bow. I would just fire the bow and endless quiver for the first two shots, and then I just get them with the quick bow because the third hit and onwards do critical damage. So I don't waste any ammo on the quick bow. The problem with this is that why do this when you can just get a grenade that gets all your arrows back? And there are probably other fun builds that you can do with it anyways. There's really nothing like fundamentally wrong with the weapon. It's just that it's very, very underwhelming. And I really don't see any reason to use it. So this weapon is going to be D tier. Next up, the Marksman's Bow. The Marksman's Bow really works when you can pull off the critical hit, but if you can't pull it off, then the Marksman's Bow does like no damage. And because of its low ammo count and how necessary it is to actually pull off the critical hit, the Marksman's Bow, I'm gonna have to say it's not as viable as some of the other options and that you really need some serious support to make it work, such as with 
uh, War Javelin or Wave of Denial. And then bosses, you really need to have these setups ready because bosses move all over the place and it's really unpredictable how much damage you get before they get close to you and you can't pull off the critical hit anymore. And it's in an awkward spot because you really want to get the arrows back so you can get critical hits in. But the thing about that is you actually have to get in close to, you know, get use something, maybe like a grenade, maybe like using the Ripper mutation to get your arrows back, which kind of is counterintuitive considering the Marksman's Bow does a critical hit when you're far away. For that reason, Marksman's Bow is a C tier item. Next up, the Sonic Carbine. So this item is a 5 BC exclusive item in the sense that you get it in the 5 boss cell area. And as much as I can tell, the Sonic Carbine is actually not good at all. So in biomes, it can work if there are a bunch of like rats or if you're surrounded by flying enemies. But where this item really suffers is in boss fights because there is no way you can pull off the critical hit with the Sonic Carbine. And even in some biomes, when you're fighting elites, when you're fighting one on one with elites, you can't pull off the critical critical hit. So you're just there, you're just mashing, you're just holding down the attack button until the target dies, which honestly in that case it's not very fun. It's a cool item to try out when you beat 5 BC because you finally have access to all of the weapons in the game, but honestly it is extremely underwhelming. So Sonic Carbine also D tier. Next up, the Infantry Bow. The Infantry Bow also dual scales with Brutality, and its critical hit condition is very easy to meet. So all you have to do is grab a Grappling Hook, and you can combo this basically anytime you want. Because of how fast the Grappling Hook cooldown is, and how easily you can just pull off the Grappling Hook cooldown every single time if you have mutations, such as Instinct. The Inventory Bow is really good and you can even pair this with, you can even dual bind this with another weapon such as Firebrand or Throwing Knife. And if that's the case, it does, it just stuns a ton of DPS. So overall, it is a, it's very solid and you can unlock this in the very beginning of the game because I don't believe the Infantry Bow takes a long time to unlock. Maybe it's even unlocked right from the beginning of the game, but I'm not too sure about that. So Infantry Bow A tier. Next up, as I was talking before, the Quick Bow. The Quick Bow has a really fast firing speed and there is no window where the player is vulnerable because from what I can tell, you can cancel the attack anytime you want and roll away. And this really emphasizes the glass cannon playstyle of tactics where you can just cancel out of attacks whenever you want because the attacks are fast, but the margin of error on the player's part is very small. Again, just like with the infantry bow, the thing better about this quick bow is that you can fire this from far away and there are more dual binding opportunities you can have with it. And overall, it's just a really, really solid item. There's so many ways you can make synergies work with the quick bow that I just gotta put this in the S tier. Next is the Ice Bow. So the Ice Bow is pretty much an alternative to the Frost Blast. It's basically a better version of it. So the Frost Blast, at least when I started playing, was always unlocked in the beginning of the game. And the Ice Bow pretty much just does that job better, in my opinion. Because there is no attack animations, at least it's very short with the Ice Bow. You just fire it and it just reaches the target and it just does what the player wants in like no time. Which is exactly what you need sometimes when you need frozen synergy. And you can pair this up with a Nutcracker. You can pair this with pretty much anything you want. Basically, if you're in need of some slowdown or freezing, then Ice Bow is a really good pickup. Obviously, it's not really useful as a primary weapon. It's more of a utility. But overall, I would say the Ice Bow is an A tier item. Next up, the Heavy Crossbow. So there was a point in time where this weapon was just really, really overpowered. Like it was above S tier overpowered, like game breakingly overpowered. But with a recent update, they changed that. So all of the crossbows in the game become two handed weapons. So now there is a reload animation. And yes, the heavy crossbow, it still does what it did before. However, it's much worse now because its ammo is limited. You have to do the reload animation sometimes to fire the crossbow again and you cannot put something in your secondary hand 
such as a shield, which is what really made it powerful before. So now this item needs a lot more effort to actually work from. But overall, this item has fallen from grace and I don't really see how it can ever come back from that. Maybe they make it so that, you know, when you reload, there's a time when the player is basically activating a force shield where they are temporarily invulnerable while they're reloading. And I think this can add to some really interesting opportunities. But Heavy Crossbow, as of 2.1, I'm gonna have to say it's a C tier item. Next up, the Repeater Crossbow. So this item also got changed to a two-handed item in a recent update. Now, the secondary attack is that you use some of your arrows to root the enemies. This is actually good and also viable in bosses because you can just root the boss and just hit them over and over with the main hand. The same thing goes with the Nutcracker, is that you specifically need Wolf Trap or any type of rooting synergy to actually make it viable in bosses. Because the first couple of times you root the boss with the repeater crossbow, it works as intended, but afterwards you cannot root the boss anymore with this weapon. So you really need specifically wolf trap or something of the sort to make it viable. But if you do manage to get those items, then the repeater crossbow can pretty much win runs for you. I would definitely say it's the better of some of the other crossbows out there. So I'm gonna say this item is an A tier item. The Ice Crossbow. This item is one of the few items in the game that rely on Frozen Synergy. And the problem with Frozen Synergy is that it can work in biomes, but not bosses. So unlike the Repeater Crossbow, this weapon will suffer a lot in bosses because bosses, you while you can freeze them, the time in which they are frozen is very, very short. And you can't do a lot with this weapon in that time frame. An obvious synergy with the Ice Crossbow is with the newly added mutation, the Kill Rhythm, where you alternate between attacks, which, you know, the first attack freezes the enemy, and then the other one deals critical damage to frozen enemies, which can sometimes work if you're fast enough, but overall, the Ice Crossbow is just kind of underwhelming, and Freeze just really isn't a viable strategy. So Ice Crossbow, C tier. The Explosive Crossbow, so this is the last of the crossbows. So the Explosive Crossbow also got reworked to a two-handed weapon, but this weapon does a crap ton of damage, especially with the ranged attack. So you can knock away an enemy with the melee attack and then just hit them with the ranged attack. And what's really good about the, heavy, uh, the Explosive Crossbow is that you don't have to be close by to the enemy. So you can just hit the enemy away from a distance and this just does so much work for you. You can put a shield in your backpack to further mitigate the chance of you getting hit and if you do this then the explosive crossbow just becomes a literal powerhouse of a weapon. And for that reason, I'm gonna say definitely this is S tier material. Next up, the Alchemic Carbine. So I believe this weapon got moved to tactics only as opposed to brutality, which, you know, makes sense considering this weapon is just really broken. So in the past, you could pull pull off this combo with Hokuto's bow in a dot build where you just fire the Hokuto's bow, fires this weapon, and then just watch the enemy die right in front of you. With the backpack mutations, you can also put this in the backpack and just fire it when you roll, which adds a status effect of poison, and you can do whatever you want with it. Even with this new update, the Alchemic Carbine is still an S tier item. So next up is the Nerves of Steel. So the gimmick about the Nerves of Steel is that you have to hold the attack button to a certain degree and then let go so it does a critical hit. However, I think there's a fine line between what's considered fun and what's considered tedious. Because while it's possible to get used to the rhythm and just kind of do the critical hits instinctively. I find the Nerves of Steel just a bit too tedious to pull off. Thankfully though, the Nerves of Steel does a, a ton of damage, but where it suffers is, is it has bad crowd control. So if you don't have the piercing the first enemy affix, then I probably would not pick up this weapon, because in my opinion the payoff just isn't there anymore. And honestly, I wonder why this weapon doesn't scale with survival as well, though I'm pretty sure there was a time when it did. This is a weapon that does really well in bosses, and in biomes, you, it's kind of situational because you have to select the right biomes to go through, so you have to avoid small crowded enemies 
So maybe you will go to the slumbering sanctuary because all the enemies there are like mid-sized. So there's no small rats running around ruining the shots from the nerves of steel when you're intending the shot to be for a bigger enemy. So overall, nerves of steel, solid item though a bit tedious to use. I'm gonna say A tier. Next is the Hokuto's bow. So this bow is like the cornerstone of DLT builds. And although it only scales with tactics now, the Hokuto's bow has never lost its damage potential. Even though it lost some of its really important weapons to pair it up with, such as the Blood Sword, the Hokuto's bow still does a ton of damage. And now with the addition of the backpack update, you can pick the Acro Battle Pack to put this bow inside your backpack and you can just pull off the damage boost without even sacrificing one of your two weapon slots. And for that reason, I'm gonna say Hokuto's bow is still an S tier item, just like before. Next, the War Javelin. So this is somewhat of a situational item to use. You can use it to fly across maps, which I guess is pretty fun, but I wouldn't consider that to be gameplay. This is an item that's heavily favored by speedrunners, especially with the new added function where you can teleport to the War Spear. However, the War Spear is not viable in bosses as a primary weapon because it just does no damage. The only gimmick that it does is that it pushes back enemies. I mean, yes, you can also put this in your backpack and it will push back enemies, but also the ability to teleport to the War Javelin is one of its unique aspects. And I think that you really want to use that teleportation to somehow make this weapon work. So obviously this isn't a weapon where you would put in your primary hand. I can see some scenarios where it can be helpful. And in bosses, I think you really have to somehow take advantage of that you can use this weapon to teleport to somehow take advantage of your build. But otherwise, well, the War Javelin isn't an item that you would normally pick up. So for that reason, I'm gonna say C tier. Next up, the Boy's Axe. So the Boy's Axe, just like the War Javelin, isn't something that you would pick up in your primary hand and it's mostly a situational item. However, what's good about the Boy's Axe is that there are way more opportunities to use this weapon. So like I said in my melee video, you can pair this with the Valmont's Whip because you can root the enemy in place so it gets into the critical sweet spot of the Valmont's Whip. You can pair this with the Nutcracker, you know. The Nutcracker does critical damage to rooted enemies, so you just root the enemy with this weapon and then, and then get them with the Nutcracker. And it's not just these two weapons that can work with the Boy's Axe, there are a ton of other options out there. And really, once I find a setup that works well with the Boy's Axe that I never used before, I will feel really good about myself. So the Boy's Axe, because of its versatility and utility potential, I'm gonna say it is a B tier item. Next up, the Hemorrhage. So the Hemorrhage is also a 5 DC exclusive item. And unlike the Sonic Carbine, the Hemorrhage is much more viable as a weapon. However, the main issue with the Hemorrhage is that it's not very fun to use. So the Hemorrhage has a very slow firing rate and it does stun lock enemies and it does a lot of damage. But in my experience, you're just standing there, you're just, you're just mashing the attack button over and over again until your target dies which if you think about it is not very fun. You can dual bind this with the throwing knife so that it always does a critical hit. You can put an alchemic carbine in your backpack. So the hemorrhage works really well in both biomes and bosses, but again, my main issue with this weapon is that it's not very fun. So for that reason, I'm gonna have to say this is a B tier item. So the boomerang has been somewhat of a odd item in this game so far. It's not a weapon that you would just use in your primary hand. It's an item where if you have it in your second slot, then you might as well just throw it while you're dealing DPS with your primary weapon. With the backpack update, you could put this in your backpack, though you can't roll through the enemy, otherwise it would just catch the boomerang. The boomerang isn't a weapon that deals a whole lot of damage, and it's mostly just there to add utility to your build because the added bonus from the boomerang can mean a lot in the long run. So overall, the boomerang, really good utility, doesn't do too much damage, but honestly, that's okay. So I'm gonna say boomerang is a B tier. Next up, the throwing knife. So this is probably one of the most popular 
ranged weapons to dual bind with because the throwing knife is it just does everything really well i mean it's it inflicts a status effect it fires really fast it has a lot of ammo and it's easily synergizable the throwing knife is one of those items where you can just add it to your build and you can easily win any runs with it when dual binded the throwing knife can be an absolute powerhouse of an item. And the best part about this item is that it's unlocked right from the beginning of the game. So definitely, I'm gonna say S tier item. Next up, the Electric Whip. So the Electric Whip, similarly to the Throwing Knife, is unlocked right from the beginning of the game. And if you ask anyone in the community that has played this game for a long time, they'll tell you the Electric Whip is just broken as hell. Now, it may seem that the Electric Whip is a melee weapon, it's actually a ranged weapon. It inflicts electric damage, and if you pair this with Parting Gift, which by the way is one of the most broken mutations right now, you can easily clear any crowded areas with the electric whip, such as the toxic sewers. Like if you go to the toxic sewers with the electric whip, like you can no hit the toxic sewers with the electric whip alone. It auto targets flying enemies and does a lot of good damage. Also with the electric with, I'm gonna also put it in the S tier. Next up, the Firebrand. This is also an item that's unlocked right from the beginning of the game, and just like the throwing knife, it also inflicts a status effect. But I would say the Firebrand is less viable than the throwing knife because it has a slower attack speed and the range is not as long as the throwing knife. So overall, it's a very popular item to dual bind and you can pair it with a lot of other oil synergy items such as the oil sword. And if you do that, then yeah, the firebrand is really really good. It serves well as utility and works well as a dot status. So the firebrand, I'm gonna say A tier. Next is the Ice Shards. So the thing about the Ice Shards is that it makes a lot of the slow survival melee weapons viable. So if you look at the Symmetrical Lance, or even like the Nutcracker, or even the Flawless, if you dual bind the Ice Shards to those weapons, like this item can single-handedly make a lot of the weapons more viable. And on top of that, it does critical damage to targets covered in oil or water, so it's easily synergizable. And because slowdown is exactly what you need to make a lot of the melee survival weapons viable, the Ice Shards is like the perfect fit to add to those builds to so you can actually win with them. So overall, the ice shards open up a lot of opportunities to other weapons. And although it doesn't really work on its own and you kind of need oil synergy to reach its full potential, the ice shards is also an S tier item. Next up, Pyrotechnics. So if you compare this to the Fire Blast, I would actually prefer Pyrotechnics because it has more strategic usage because I think the combo that the Pyrotechnics has requires more brain usage than the Fire Blast, which I actually think is a good thing. Because like I said, a weapon also needs to have a learning potential and I think it takes more time to master the Pyrotechnics than it does the Fire Blast. And although these two things do a very similar function, I would say the Pyrotechnics is a fun but not broken item to win with, and for that reason, I'm gonna say it is an A tier item. Next up, Lightning Bolt. So similarly to the Fire Blast, the Lightning Bolt, what differs from it is that it doesn't need any other synergies to make it viable, in the sense that you can just hold the attack button and it does critical hits, though you have to be careful not to hold it for too long, otherwise you take damage yourself. And from what I've seen, as long as you have good control over this weapon, you can do a lot of damage with it. But the main issue with the Lightning Bolt is that I like builds where you actually need synergy to make it work because it takes more effort from the player's part to actually make the run fun. And although the Lightning Bolt is very useful in a lot of scenarios, especially in water, I would say the Lightning Bolt is just an above average item and I would put it in the B tier. Next up, the Barrel Launcher, which is the newly added weapon from 2.0 with the Distillery update. So in 2.1, 
Their launch rate got scaled to tactics only as opposed to dual scaling with brutality. And what I really like about the barrel launcher is that it has a very steep learning curve because if you just use it with absolutely no knowledge of ever using this weapon, then you're gonna suffer a lot because first of all, you have to be sure that enemies aren't attacking you, otherwise they can deflect the barrel back at you, which can deal damage to yourself. And second, you kind of have to find the right angles to use this weapon. But it is one of the best biome clearing items and boss killing items because you actually have to find the correct route to make use of the barrel launcher. So you definitely can't go to the giant because there are no walls. So you can't take advantage of this critical hit condition. But once you do master the barrel launcher, it's just one of the most fun things to use in the game. So I would say the barrel launcher definitely not the most broken thing in the world, but A tier for sure. Next is the blowgun. So the blowgun functions very similarly to the assassin's dagger. However, the blowgun, in my opinion, is just a strictly worse item. The reason for this is that it is a ranged weapon and it has an ammo count. So if you don't do a critical hit with the blowgun, then it does like no damage and you have to wait till the arrows come back before you can do it again. I mean sure you can pair this up with phaser but you can also pair up assassin's dagger with the phaser and the assassin's dagger benefits more from being close range to the enemy. And before a viable mutation you could pick with the blowgun is predator however in the latest update predator got moved to brutality only so this combo is no longer available. And in bosses it is possible that you make it work if you have something that get your arrows back but why why go through all that trouble when you can just use the assassin's dagger? Because there's not enough of a distinction from the assassin's dagger that I think the blowgun is just an item that I just openly avoid because I can't really have fun with this item. So unfortunately, and this is probably going to be one of the most controversial choices on this list, is that the blowgun is a D tier item. Next up, the magic missiles. So the magic missiles where it really suffers is in the early game where it doesn't do a lot of damage. However, if you get enough scroll counts, the magic missiles can work really well, especially if you dual bind it to another ranged attack. The best part about this is that it doesn't have an ammo count, so you can use it as much as you want. And on top of that, it also auto targets enemies, hence why the name is called magic missiles. However, like I said in the intro, one of the factors about my items is that they all have to be fun and have a learning curve and the magic missiles while it's good it just doesn't it doesn't feel fun or have a learning curve to it so unfortunately i'm gonna say the magic missiles is a c tier item next up is the frost blast so the frost blast is always available from the beginning of the game at least that was when i started playing and back then i thought it was really good because it mitigated a lot of damage since you can just go up to a platform, freeze everything on there and then just hit them with your weapon. While this worked in the early days of a player's journey, there are other items that synergize better with the frozen mechanics such as the ice bow. And honestly, once you unlock other items, the frost blast kind of becomes obsolete. The only really viable build you can do with the frost blast is if you dual bind it with ice shards, which can be very good considering you just constantly put the enemies in lock down. But overall, Frost Blast, good to use in the early game, but kind of underwhelming as you move along to 5 BC. So I'm gonna say Frost Blast C tier. And finally, last but not least, is the Fire Blast. So like I said before, comparing this with Pyrotechnics, I think the Fire Blast does too similar of a function, and I think it has less of a learning curve than the Pyrotechnics. Because you just drop down your oil synergy, and you just hold down the attack button to deal critical damage, while it makes damage more accessible, while this deals more constant damage, I think that the Fire Blast just kind of gets outclassed by the Pyrotechnics. Overall, I think it's not bad as an item, but because that I would prefer to take the Pyrotechnics over the Fire Blast, I'm gonna say the Fire Blast is a B tier item. So there we have it. Here is my full ranged tier list for Dead Cells 2.1. Now keep in mind that this is my opinion and you are allowed to disagree with me. In fact, it's more interesting if you disagree with me because the best part about tier lists is that it's no fun if everyone agrees with you. So if you do disagree, make sure to let me know in the comments. 
So in the future, I plan on doing one last tier list for the skills. I do not plan to do one for the shields and mutations because I think because those are pretty much too situational and I don't think there's too much of a distinction between mutations and shields. And on top of tier lists, I plan on doing more guides related to dead cells. So if that's something that interests you, make sure to stick around. And that's going to be it for me today. Thanks for watching.